It's recording. Okay, so we are reviewing for um, our test on radicals and exponential forms. It will be Wednesday. Okay, so let's make sure we can do this. We're going to write each expression in radical form. It's been a long time since we did this. Just remember, guys, the little two on the bottom that goes on the outside, right? So 7 to the first power, we don't really need to change that. 2, you don't have to put a 2 there when it's squared, but I'm just going to put one there so you guys remember how to do this kind of way. Yep. I've raised it to the first power. It's squared. I'd pay attention instead of playing my phone right now since we are going to have a test on Wednesday. So you could actually pass this. That would be great. Okay, now we're going to take these. I'm going to do like number 9. We're going to take this radical expression and change it into exponential form. So we go 2 to the 5 fourths. Okay? The 4 is what's being squared, is what the root is being taken to, and 5 is what it's being raised to. Like, how big is it? <coughs> yeah. Okay. Let's turn the page, front page, not too bad. Okay. All right. So for number 13, the important part to remember, oh, wait. The important part to remember for these is just that the, it doesn't matter that it has an x there or not. You know, like this, the same thing, this is to the 5x is to the 4th, and we're taking it to the negative 5th. It's just like we did on the other one, except there's a letter in there. Okay. Same for number 19, like m to the third over 4. Same thing, it's just with letters. Okay? All right. Let's move on to solve equations, each equation at the bottom. It says the square root of x equals 10. What do I do to get rid of the square root? What's the opposite of square rooting? Not the squaring, squaring, right? So I get x equals 100. That's it. Because you're squaring it. You're s the opposite of square rooting is squaring. Okay, so first of all, okay, first of all, shh. This is from the quiz we took before. All of this that I've done so far is the quiz we took before finals. Okay. Okay. It's exactly, okay, I can tell, I can prove to you, I can take out the quiz and take out the review. They're the same thing. I literally, when I put up the quiz, I make up the quiz, shh, and then I literally go through and change the numbers. It's exactly the same as the review. You should keep the numbers the same. All right. Okay. All right. Right here, we're looking at, we've got radicals, okay? They're being, and this is a plus sign. It's like kind of faded. We want to add these two things together. The problem is we've got 3 square root of 8 plus 3 square root of 2. We have to have inside the square roots have to be the same. You guys kind of remember this? What two numbers multiply to give us 8 where 1 is a perfect square? 4, Four right? So this becomes 3 square root 4 times 2. What's the square root of 4? What's 3 times 2? So we get 6 square root 2 plus 3 square root 2. See how we changed this? We did each of these steps and got down to 6 square root 2. Now 6 plus 3 is 9 square root 2 is my answer. So we've just got what, what's underneath the square root. We've got to make it the same. <laughs> We're just making it the same. Do you want to do another one like that? Maybe like 17? Okay. All right. Now, do you see that that's the square root of 18? And that's the square root of 2. We want them both to say the square root of 2, right? We want them to say whatever the smaller one is. Okay. What times 2 gives me 18? 9. Is 9 a perfect square? No. Okay. So we go 3 square root 9 times 2 minus 2 square root 2. What's the square root of 9 again? 3. 3. 
So we get 3 times 3 square root 2 minus 2 square root 2. So far so good? What's 3 times 3? Okay. 9 square root 2 minus 2 square root 2. What's 9 minus 2? <laughs> 7. Good. 7 square root 2. That's my final answer. Okay? All right. Let's go down to um, solving these. We're going to look at number three because I taught you guys how to do this one wrong. All right. All right, so I'm looking at the top. The top says 4x to the fifth. Now look at the bottom. It says 8x squared minus 4x. Is there anything on the bottom that I can take out? What goes into 8x and 4x evenly? 4 and a x. So I'm left over 8x squared. So 4x times what gives me 8x squared? 2x. And then we want a negative 1, right? Okay. So if we look from the top to the bottom, I can cancel out these 4s. And I can cancel out one of these x's and make this 4. So I get x to the fourth over 2x minus 1. That's my final answer. Questions? Yeah. Which one would you like to do? Number four? Sure. Number four, if we're looking at number four right here, see this little four right here on the outside? It means each one of these is taken to the fourth. It was one of the most common mistakes on this quiz. But it's 3 to the 4th, x to the 4th, y to the 4th. Okay? And then 3 times 3 is? 9 times 3 is? 27 times 3. What's 27 times 3, guys? Put it in. Put it in. 81. 81. 81x to the 4th, y to the 4th. Fourth wide of them. It was one of the most common, like I thought it was a really easy problem, and you guys messed it up a lot on the quiz. So just remember if there's a four on the outside, everything in the inside is taken to that fourth. Okay, so we've gotten really, really chatty all of a sudden. And we've got more to do. Okay? All right, let's turn it over. Okay. Here's our function one. We like a lot of you guys did okay with this one. All right, here are we've got f minus g to the x. Here's f at the top, here's g. Okay? So I'm just gonna go x minus one, and I'm gonna put in parentheses, minus, thank you. Two x squared minus 3. Okay? So now I'm just going to distribute this negative in the front to both of them. So I've got x minus 1 minus 2x to the th squared plus 3. Now I'm going to combine like terms. Which ones go together? There's no, like, I've got negative 2x squared, and then I've got plus x, and then I've got negative 1 and 3 go together, so that gives me 2. Okay? And now the next step for part B is all I do is I plug a 3 wherever there's an x for these. So a lot of you guys got this part wrong because you created a whole new thing over here. All you have to do is take the one from A, and then instead of an x, you're going to put a 3. Okay? And then 3 times 3 is 9. 9 times negative 2 is negative 18. Um, plus 3, plus 2, so negative 18, uh, plus 5 is negative 13, is your answer. Okay? All right, do you want to do 8? It's almost the same thing except it's division. Or should we go move on? Yeah, you do? I want to do 8. 
Okay. All right. Let's look at eight. Okay, we're going to do division. Shh. F of x is 2x plus 4. And then g of x is x squared minus 2. So when I look at this, is there anything I can pull out of these? I mean, I can pull it 2 out of the top, but that's not going to help me eliminate anything. So that's as far as I can go. So now I'm just going to redo this. But I'm going to multiply this by 2. Everywhere there's an x, there is now a 2. Okay? So if we do the top, 2 times 2 is 4, plus 4 is 8. If we do the bottom, 2 times 2 is 4. 4 minus 2 is 2. 8 divided by 2 is 4. Please stop me if you have questions about any of this. Um, if they have anything that I can cancel from the top to bottom, which here I can, they can't, so I can just leave it just like that. Okay. Okay. Nine through twelve is. We had some problems when we did this, so let's try this. Okay. All right. So for number nine, we're gonna start. We're gonna do it a different way than the original way I taught you. We're going to do it the second way because that seemed to work better. So I'm looking at the inside first. Now you see this negative 3 right there means wherever there's an x, you stick a negative 3, right? So first we're going to look at g. g is 2 times x, right? So I'm just going to put 2 times negative 3. We good so far? Yeah. Okay. Now, wherever there's an x, we're going to put this whole thing, 2 times negative 3. Okay? So if I look at f of x right here, see how it says 3x minus 1? So I'm going to put 3 parentheses minus 1. That's the, the x that goes there. So 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. Negative 6 times 3 is negative 18. Negative 18 minus 1 is negative 19. The most important thing, which almost nobody in this class did, you should end up with just a number for all of these. Not an x. No x should be there. Almost the entire class did not do that. So make sure you end up with just a number. Let me try one. Okay. Which one do you want to try? Four. Four. <laughs> oh, it should be 14. Want to try 14? Go ahead, try 14. 14 is a good one. Try 14. Try 14. That was my mistake. That should have been a... Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> We good? No, wait. Okay, I'm waiting one more second because somebody wants me to wait. Hey, hey, hey. I'm recording this. Watch our language. Okay. All right. Number 14. We're looking at f of x. We're going to have 3 times 3 minus 1. So far, so good? 
Yeah. Okay. So we can we can just do this one if you want right away. Three times three is nine. Nine minus one is eight. But then this answer I've got to put back in for x again. Okay. Twenty four minus one is twenty three is my final answer. Good. You got 26? Yeah, but I didn't, I didn't like you do the first one. Okay. Shh. Guys, why are we talking right now? Shh. Okay. So, Madison did hers this way. Hold on. We did, she did 3 times 3 minus 1. And then she took that whole thing and you should times it by 3 minus 1. Okay, that's fine. You can totally do it this way. But 3 times 3 is 9. 9 minus 1 is 8. Okay. And then 3 times 8 is 24. 24 minus 1 should still be 23. So you should still end up with the same answer. Okay. So now we're getting into the stuff that the last quiz was on. All right? So, for example, for number 5, we're just going to change x and y and see if it gives us g. If it does, the answer is yes. If it doesn't, it's no. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to go x equals negative y plus 1 to the third. Okay? So first thing I'm going to do is divide by a negative. Get rid of that negative in front. So I get negative x equals y plus 1 to the third. How do I get rid of anything to the third? I take the third root. Third root third root. So I get the third root, negative x to the third root equals y plus 1, and then I subtract 1. Yeah, that right there, does that, are they equal to each other? So the answer is no, they're not, it's not an inverse. Okay, all right, let's turn the page. <laughs> okay. All right. These are exactly the same. Do, which one do you want to do? 13, 14, 15, or 16? 13? Okay. 13. We've got X equals 7Y plus 18 over 2. Shh. I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. 2X equals 7Y plus 18. Then I'm going to? Good. So 2X minus 18 equals 7Y. Then I'm going to? Divide by 7. So I get 2x minus 18 over 7 equals y. That's my inverse. Okay? All right. Let's look at 19. Okay? Let's look at 19. Okay. So there are three pieces we have to do for 19. So let's pay attention. Okay? First thing we have to do. For 19 is graph this equation. So we go to our graph page. We go negative 2x to the third plus 1. And it shows up and gives me this graph. So I want to plot that on here. So I'm going to hit control T and come up with a table. And I'm going to make sure I do some negatives. Like negative 2, it's negative 17, so it's off the chart somewhere. Negative 1 is at 3. 0 is at 1. 1 is at negative 1. 2 is way down at negative 15, so I know I'm going like this. OK? 
Okay? So right there, that gives me my two points. Now I am going to find the inverse of this. So I'm going to say x equals negative 2x to y to the third. You guys got to stop talking while I'm talking. Oh Just shut up. Okay. Now I'm going to subtract 1 from each side. x minus 1 equals negative 2y to the third. Now I'm going to divide by a negative 2. x minus 1 over negative 2 equals y to the third. How do I get rid of that third? Cube root it. Okay, so my f of x to the negative 1 or my y to show my inverse is x minus 1 over negative 2 to the third root. So then I'm just going to graph this again. Okay. I'm just going to put this in here. When I put it in my calculator, I'm just going to make sure I take the third root of everything when I put it in. Okay. Then I'm going to hit Control T to come up with my table. And I'm going to plug these numbers in again. For negative 2, at negative 2, I'm at, ne I'm at 1 point something, so I'm right here. At negative 1, I'm at 1. Oh, I'm at 1 point something, so I'm up here. At, z at 1, I'm at 0. Shh. At 2, I'm at negative something. At 1, I'm at 0. So I look like this. There we go. And I'm done. Okay? It's not the prettiest thing in the world, but it's finished. Okay, so the rest of this review is due tomorrow. I know there's a lot on here, okay? But I do want you to try all of these. Yep.